This colony is doing very well and the queen has laid a ton of brood. You can also tell by looking at her gaster that she is drinking a lot of nectar as well, which is a good sign. They are on track to becoming a healthy, mature colony, and that's what I want to see. Next up is my Myrmocostis testaceous honeypot ants. They have the most brood and the most workers at this point compared to my other honeypot species. And judging from the size of the cocoons, it looks like the second generation of workers will be much bigger. And the queen of this colony is turning into a temporary replete, which means she is storing up all the nectar for the colony at this time. And when you compare these to the Myrmocostis willieri, you can tell the size difference is pretty substantial. And this is the first time I've ever seen this. They actually made a mound around the opening to the outworld. And the last honeypot on today's update will be my favorite one, Myrmocostis mendax. It's hard to tell how well this colony is doing because the queen likes to hide and she likes to hide all the brood with her. But I love the size and the color of these ants compared to the other honeypots. And you can tell the second generation is going to come any day by judging from the color of those cocoons. The queen is hiding in the hole above the water tower. And I can't tell if this colony is foraging in the outworld because their black gaster makes it difficult to see if they're drinking nectar. This is definitely my favorite honeypot species though. Next up will be my Campanatus fragilis. We haven't checked on this colony since me and my daughter moved him into the Tar Heel Ants nucleus nest. Since then, they've built this weird barrier around one of the water towers where the queen stays all the time. However, she did run out as soon as I put light on her to film this. This colony is growing very fast, and I lose one or two workers every time I try to go feed or change the nectar. I get asked often what kind of sugar I feed my ants, and I use Perky Pet Hummingbird Nectar. And I've lost colonies using other brands, so I would stick to Perky Pet if you decide to use this kind of nectar. This is one side of the Tar Heel Ants Nucleus Formicarium, and you can tell it's still too big for this colony. And here's a look at the other side of the Tar Heel Ants Nucleus Formicarium, and you can see on this side they didn't build the little barrier on the water tower. This nest is starting to build up their trash inside, but as the colony starts to fill it out they will remove it all. But I'm happy with the progress this colony is making, especially because when I got them they weren't doing very well in the nest I put them in at first. And if you're a beginning ant keeper, I really suggest this species because they're very easy to take care of and very forgiving of mistakes. Next up is my Campanatus vicinus. Not much has happened with them since my very first video. They are about the same size and they're growing very slowly. But that's okay, I do like to have some colonies that don't grow very fast. And this colony is starting to produce bigger workers now. They do make a mess of their outworld though. I'll never get that red out. The next colony we'll be updating today is my Campanatus CA02. These look very similar to Vicinus, but they have very different behavior patterns. They are very active and the queen produces brood much quicker than Vicinus. There is also a substantial size difference between these two species, but you can't tell because she only has her first workers right now. And they don't really make a big mess of their outworld. Thanks for joining me today guys, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of California Ant Keeper. Please subscribe.